who's the master planner? This seems like a fair enough question. We've been exploring the master plan, but what about the actual master planner? In Numbers 14 verse 21, God says, As truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And here we learn that the plan belongs to the God of Israel. The plan that we learn in the very first verse of the Bible is also the one who created everything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, so God is the one behind the plan, but what is his name? In Exodus 3, verse 13 to 15, Moses asked God this question. It seems like a reasonable question, especially as Moses has been living in Egypt, where they had many gods with names like Osiris and Anubis. So God replies to Moses, but with a somewhat baffling answer. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. In Exodus 3 verse 14. Now you can imagine Moses. He's a little bit confused by that answer. In fact, God was telling Moses more than just his name. He was telling Moses who he is. It's a phrase that doesn't just mean I am, but I was and I will be. He's telling Moses that the eternal power has sent you. However, as Moses wants to know his name, God continues. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Now, most English versions of the Bible just use the word Lord here. But in the Hebrew, God is saying, his name is Yehovah or Yahweh, depending on your pronunciation. Let me ask you something. Imagine for a moment two cartoon characters. One is round and the other is spiky. Which one would you name Balba and which one Kiki? Balba, Kiki. Recent research has found that most people will name the round character Balba and the spiky one Kiki for no other reason than how they sound. Balba sounds round and kiki sounds spiky. It's for this reason that how he pronounced God's name is not important, but what his name means is what is important. In a previous lesson, we looked at when Moses asked God to show him his glory. God didn't show Moses a, a light show or some divine display but rather he revealed his character to Moses. Let's read it again. But this time, listen carefully and see if you can spot another detail. Exodus 34 verses 5 and 6. And then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Did you see the important detail? It says, The Lord came down and proclaimed His name. God's name is His character. A name is much more than how it sounds. It's what it represents. God's name is His character, which is His glory. However, it doesn't end there. God's name is actually a family name. And much like today, we've got surnames. God intends for all his children to have this name. In Acts 15 verse 14, we read that God came to the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And, and so just like a, a family shares similar characteristics, God will give his name to everyone who shares his character. And so it is that in Revelation, Jesus, the perfect reflection of God's character says, Those who are victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. I will write on them the name of my God. And so the story will end when the master planner, 
God of the universe gives his name to his entire family. And then as we read in Zechariah 14 verse 9, the Lord will be king over the whole earth. And on that day, there will be one Lord and his name, the only name. Now that's a family name worth knowing.